I hope you're enjoying this Figma series so far. If you did miss my previous videos, then just feel free to check them out. They're going to be in the description below. In this video, we are going to learn how to use and master auto layout and constraints in Figma. And trust me, this is one of the most powerful things you can do in Figma, as this will speed up your design process like tenfold. So to learn how to properly use constraints in auto layout, we are going to recreate this model window or AKA pop-up. So as you can see, because we're using constraints in auto layout, this design is fully responsive. So no matter on what screen size I want to use it, I can change its width and all the elements will adapt accordingly inside, which is a huge time saver because that means that we only need to create an element once and then afterwards it's just gonna adapt to the different screen sizes that we're gonna design for. So instead of creating three designs for desktop, tablet and mobile, you just create one design that adapts automatically. And the thing is, is like this is how normally front end works. So the fact that Figma brought this into their software is just amazing. So now let's recreate the pop-up and see how I've done it. So the first thing we need to do is to create a frame. So we're going to create a new frame. I'm just going to go to desktop, hit desktop here. We're going to change the color of the background, obviously, just so we have a bit more contrast between the white and that. And then we're going to analyze this. So what do we have here? So here we have a title. We have kind of like a subtitle or a text explaining to the user what they're subscribing for. Then we have a couple of input fields and a button. Now, in terms of visual elements, the only elements that we have is text, a button and an input field. That's it. So now the first thing that we're going to do is to recreate the header over here. So to do that, we're just going to grab our text. We're just going to hit subscribe to our newsletter. And then afterwards, underneath, I'm just going to copy paste this lorem ipsum over here. Just going to copy this over here. Okay, so now because we've set up the file previously to have all those uh, text tiles, the only thing we need to do is go here on text, hit desktop, like the third one, and then afterwards change this to body. And voila, now, as you can see, we are very consistent with our fonts because we learned how to do the typography scale. In case you missed that video, make sure to check it out. It's down in the description below. So now the rule that I want to apply to these ones is that all the time I want the distance between the header and the text over here to be zero pixels. So to do that, I'm just going to select both of them and I'm going to go here to auto layout. And once I hit auto layout, this will create a frame. Basically, it will group the two together. Once they are grouped together, I just need to specify the rules. This is the spacing between items. So here I want to have it zero. So now we have this group and all the time, the distance between the elements, no matter what I do, this is going to be zero. I need to double click on this one and I need to select it. So it's uh, wrapping around the text. So this box is out of width. And then afterwards, I will do exactly the same for the title. And now we have the title of the pop up. Now, the next element is this kind of like input field. To create the input field, we do exactly the same thing. We can actually copy this text over here and we're just going to drag, drag it over here. So the fact that is it's not in the frame anymore, that means that this is independent and it will not be affected by the rules that we gave to this frame. So we can actually name this to header. OK, so now let's create the input field. So we have this here. Let's put uh, first name. And then how can we make this without having a rectangle? Well, you don't create buttons or input fields using rectangle and text anymore. You're just going to use the text and then afterwards you're going to apply the rules to the auto layout. And that's how you're going to create the input field or the button. So now we have this text and we're going to be like, OK, I want this to be an input field. So to do that, what I need to do first is right click and I need to create the frame around this. So I need to create to select frame selection. Once I do that, I can rename this to input. But now, as you can see, nothing changed. But if we go here on auto layout and then we click on it, now we start applying the rules. Now, based on my design, I know that there is a padding around this text. So for example, if we look at the previous one, we noticed that it's a 16 pixel padding on top and 26 on sides. So if I go here and if I select my one, I just put 16 on top and 26 here. 
Okay, fair enough. But I cannot see anything because I don't have any background or I don't have any strokes. So now I will apply a stroke. I'm just gonna apply a stroke and we're gonna see the shape that we created. I'm gonna round the corners to around four and then I'm gonna change the color maybe to a light gray. Let me be precise to cre recreate the exact same one. So I use this hex code. So I'm gonna use the exact same one here. And now we have the first input field. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this to have first name, then last name, and email. And I will use the exact same one to create the button. The only thing that I'm gonna change is I'm gonna remove the stroke, add the fill, select the fill that uh, I've selected here so I can create this fill. And then afterwards I will change this to white and now I have a button. And that's it, that's all you need to design. The rest of it is just auto layout and I kid you not. So how do we make this thing out of this mess? Cause it's like, it sounds impossible, but it's super simple actually. So first we need to see what elements we should group together to create this auto layout. So for this one, we said like, okay, the rule is that the title and subtitle should have zero pixels in between. Now the next one is, okay, these ones, I want them to sit side by side all the time, like the first name and last name. So that's the next one that we're gonna do. We're gonna copy these ones. We're gonna add an auto layout to them. These will group, were grouped. So we make sure that we say like here, uh, first name uh, plus last name, my name, okay, that's good. And then I will say that the distance between them, I would like it to be 16 pixels and that's it. But now if we try to resize this, it still doesn't work. And that's because we did not tell Figma how the children inside this frame should behave. So in order to make this responsive, what I need to do is to go to my previous frame and just tell it to be like, okay, you need to fill the container. So now this one is filling the container. So when I change the size of the parent container, then the first name says, okay, fine, then I need to fill the container. This one though, it's on hug. That means that it hugs the content inside. So as long as the content stays the same, the size of it will stay the same as well. So what we need to do if we want to make this responsive as well, we're gonna select this and we're gonna say, okay, fill container on this as well. So now, as you can see, they are both filling the container. So on the email one though, we cannot have that option. We just have fix with or hug content. And that's because we don't have a parent frame that can guide it to be like, okay, this is my size, you have to grow inside. So the thing is like, because we don't have that frame outside, this email here, like this input with email will not grow. So the trick that we need to do is basically we need to group this email with the previous frame that we created, like the first name and last name. We're just gonna group these together. We're gonna apply auto layout we're gonna say, okay, I want a 16 pixel spacing between them. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go here to the email, which we can rename this email, so it's a lot clearer. I will say this email, I want it to fill my frame. And this is how it fills. Now, if I go back and if I change this, this will fill the frame. Now, the only thing that Figma didn't fix is that when you apply kind of like a new rule, the previous ones just go back to their default state, which is fixed. So that's why the top one is not is not resizing anymore. So what I need to do is to select the previous frame, first name and last name, and change it from fixed to fill container. And now everything is working as it should be. So the thing is, is like, I'm not sure why, but every single time you apply a new rule or a new kind of like auto layout or a constraint, kind of like Figma defaults the previous ones to you know, like fixed. So every single time you're applying a new auto layout, you should be aware of this. And in case something doesn't work out, make sure that the children inside the parent element have the correct setting. Okay, so now we have all the elements. Now we need to create this white card in the background. And again, we're gonna do this using auto layout. So now that we have all these elements, we're just gonna select them all, select auto layout once again, and we're gonna say, okay, the distance between elements I want to have like 32. Then again, because of the Figma thing, you need to go back and change this from fixed because now instead of fill, it's it defaulted back on fixed. You can, you can just change this to fill 
Same for the text because now it's on hog. So we want this to fill container. Same for this one. We have to make sure that everything is set on fill. Now everything, it's a frame. So this will be our pop-up. Now I want this pop-up to be white and have a bit of a margin. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to auto layout. I'm gonna select here, for example, 64 pixels. Here, 64 pixels. I'm gonna round the corners for, let's say 20%, like 20 uh, pixels. Then I'm gonna go and add a fill so I can see the actual box. And voila, this is how you create the pop-up. Super simple, super easy. And now this will be fully responsive. Now, in case you have things like, you know, the text is not wrapping correctly and so on, just make sure that here in the settings, you have the correct settings. So for example, fill container, and afterwards again, same thing for these ones, just make sure they're on fill, they're on fill, container, and fill container as well. So this is how you make your pop-up fully responsive. And just make sure that this email over here is aligned to the left for this one, because we said that, okay, we want this to fill the entire container and the text is centered. So I, we need to left align it because otherwise it will not stay on the left. This is how you create a pop-up using only auto layout and constraints. Now, let me show you the constraints because this was only the auto layout. Like for constraints, what it does, basically when you have this pop-up over here, the constraints are telling the pop-up how to behave when the frame is changing size. So for example, if we, we click on this one, we see that our constraints are top and left. That means that when we are resizing our artboard, that will stay on the top left corner. Now, if we want this to kind of like adapt to the artboard or to the frame, what we need to do is to change this to left and right. And this will adjust the whole design then to the frame. And you can do this for all the elements. Now, you're probably wondering is like, okay, fine. But if I want this to adapt to mobile, how will I do it? So if we create a new frame and if we add a phone frame, like an iPhone mini, You'll see that if I'm trying, I'm going to just change the color of this as well to gray. And if I'm going to try to adapt this to mobile, obviously it will not look that good. So now what we need to do is just change slightly our settings. So now in order to adapt this to mobile, we will need to change a couple of settings in our auto layout. So if we select the pop-up, we can see that the margins on top and bottom are 64 pixels. So we can drop this to 24, for example, and this one as well. That will give a bit more space to the content inside. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is to change this heading, like from H3 desktop to mobile, because we did create the mobile type scale. In case you missed that video, make sure to check it out in the description below. It will make more sense. So now that we change this to our H3 mobile, then we will see that these two are actually squeezed together because when we created the auto layout here on the right side, we gave it kind of like the setting to be like, okay, this is horizontal direction. So these two will be stacked horizontally. Now, because now we are on a vertical screen, the only thing we need to do is just switch this from horizontal to vertical. And these will be stacked now one on top of each other. And now, if you look at it, it's pretty much the same thing, but it's just adapted to mobile. So this is how easy it was for me to readapt an element that I created for desktop to mobile. And this is it. This is how you use constraints and auto layout to make your designs responsive. Now, don't be discouraged if you don't get this right in your first try, as this will take a bit of practice to nail it. Trust me, I've been through the same pains. It took me a while to figure everything out, but now that I personally know how to use auto layout, I cannot use anything else but auto layout. And with this being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. And also please let me know down in the comments below if you're using auto layout, because I'm curious to see how many of you are using auto layout on a regular basis. So until next time, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye.